yesterday we talked about um, objects and arrays. Uh, basically, objects are an, an ordered list. Right? Yeah. Where are they? <laughs> an ordered list that you can store a key value pairing. Uh, JSON, again, is um, used for data interchanging when you send um, data from server to server. And usually, JSON passed <laughs> in the server to server is in the text file. And when, let's say, a uh, server or computer would consume it, you need to parse it, and it becomes a, an object. OK? So let's try to do some recap. And the code for today, you are the semicolon to my statement. So don't forget semicolons. OK, let's start with our daily recap. I could give this keyboard to a person. Um, want to try it, please? Okay. Want to try Okay, you can help your partner, whatever. What's the phrase? Okay, so let's create a JSON or a JavaScript object notation or an object. You can um, you can uh, use any key value pairing. So first off, you may want to create a variable. Okay. Okay. And then you open it with braces. And then now your key value pairing, you would want your key to be in a string. Uh, okay, choose anything you want, like let's say name. And you can put your name on the side. Okay, um, we can put another key value pairing, let's say H. <laughs> okay, uh, that should be fine for now. Uh, can you log it out in the console, the whole object? Save. Okay. Let me refresh the uh, console. Good. Uh, now let's use the TypeScript scene. So don't forget to put on the types. So what you can have to type? Sure. <laughs> okay. To uh, utilize the typing in TypeScript. Um, change uh, after the variable name object, put a colon. And then put a colon. That's a semicolon. And then you open up with another brace. And then open up a bracket. And then uh, use key. And then colon, then string. Outside of the square bracket, uh, do a space. Oh, before that, uh, put a colon, another colon, yep. And then put a string. Yep, string, yep. And hit save. Let's see if you, the code still works. Yep. Uh, pass it to the next person. Choose the next person. Again, it's fine. If you don't know, I'll, I'll help you guys um, type it. OK. So can you? Hmm? So no, the output is an object. So, uh, so how do you check the type? Good question. The type of the variable. Yeah, so uh, can you log it out of the console to check the type of the variable name object? Uh, the keyword is type and then type of. So console.log, open parentheses, and then type of. 
open parentheses, the variable. Close, semicolon, save. I'll save it for you. Okay, it's an object. Great. Um, next is can you access the key? Using dot notation or bracket notation, up to you. Uh, sorry, I'll put you back there. So to access it, you just um, remove the type of first because we're done checking the type. Uh -huh. Use the variable name object. And then you can do the dot notation and then the key that you want, name or age. And then hit save, see, awesome. So you now have access to the value, okay? Next, um, you can pass it to another person. Okay, now we'll try use, uh, accessing the uh, key age using the bracket notation. Can you please change the dot name to a square bracket first? And remove the dot. And don't forget to enclose the name with double quotes or single quotes. Hit save. Awesome. Let's see. Still, um, can you change it to age? Yeah, instead of name, change it to age. Okay, good question. Again, as a recap, double quotation <laughs> is, is, is a way when you have, if you want to use single quotes inside of your string, use double quotation so you don't have to escape the single quote. And the other way around, if you want a double quote inside your string, use a single quote so you don't have to escape the double quote. So if we don't need any escape, single or double, it doesn't matter. Whatever I like that to use. Yes. But which one do you prefer to use? So uh, as the best practice, if you choose something, let's say you want single code, please use single code all throughout your code. Okay? Uh, did I answer your question? Yes. <laughs> use a single code because of all the ones. Uh, Kevin's in the effort to use a single code. Yeah. Okay. Someone is evaluating me here. <laughs> no, <I'm gone. laughs> okay, so we change that, let's save too old. Thank you. I am not. Okay. Uh, pass it to James. No, I'm just gonna guide you through. It's like pair programming. When you do pair programming, the other one just talks and the other one just types. So you can do that. Let's try to remove everything here. Help you out. Um, define a variable name R, A-R-R. -R. So you can use the keyword let, var, or const. Anyone can tell me the difference between var, const, and OK, good. Right. Okay. So uh, put an equal sign so that you can assign a value. Equal sign. Yes. And then now to create an array, you open up a square bracket. That's brace. Square bracket. And then now let's create a array of numbers. So please put four numbers and separate it by commas. Four numbers. 
Okay, uh, don't forget your semicolon at the end of the statement, uh, the expression to make it a statement. Uh, go to the last, that's one, yep. semicolon. <coughs> oh, uh, no, that's a parenthesis, a semicolon. Let's say call it. This is semicolon. Okay. Uh, next, um, can you output the index number two? So in your console.log, please delete the object age, remove everything. And now we're going to simulate accessing an element in an array. Put this down for now so we can see clearly. Now console.log and then open parentheses. And inside of it, uh, use the variable R, A R R. And then to access it, use the square bracket. Uh, it, it should be beside the variable R. Uh, inside of the parentheses, beside, uh, on the right side of R. There you go. And um, let's say put number two, because you want to access the, uh, don't forget your semicolon at the end. At the very end. Okay, hit save. I'll hit save for you. And there you go, you access it. Thank you for participating. I'll continue as well. Oh, you wanna go next? Awesome. Uh, can you please check the length of the array using an API or a method? Uh, I'll put you back to the other one. Awesome, hit save, I'll refresh, length of four. Uh, can you put a type safe for the array? So again, whenever we want a type safe, we start with a colon after the variable name, and now we create a square bracket. I uh, know, not square bracket, define the type, number, but because this is an array, we need a square bracket. There you go, save, still works. Cool, okay, thank you, thank you so much. Let's get a bunch of white uh, Again, because without the type safe, I can do this one. Uh, there you go, if I do a type safe now, Again, it is preferred to keep your array in one data type. If you want a numbers array, just put numbers. If you want a string array, just string, okay? Let's go back quickly to um, objects. So in objects, you can also do a uh, nested objects. Let's go back to this one, Mighty Morphin. This is there my favorite. And then colon, define the uh, type safe. The key I want is a string operator and then string. No, no. The value would be string or number. And then equal sign. Now I start putting my objects. Uh, let's go back to the TV show. And then Power Rangers. And let's see, uh, year. So yesterday we left off with that. And then let's log that out. Okay. What if we want to put another object? So first thing is just a comma. 
right? And then let's say we want, instead of an array of rangers, we want an object of a ranger, rangers, okay? So you put something like this, and then you create your object again. And then let's say it has a key value pairing of color and red. Now it's complaining. It's saying uh, it's not assignable to type string or number. So what we do with this is because this is a key, we put this here, object, type operator. Okay, now I can see that, the object. That's a nested object. That's an easier way to do, but another thing that you can uh, do with it is use type keyword. So with the type keyword is you're defining again your custom typing. Go ahead. Uh, again, so if you have a nested object, basically you have a key value, but that value is another key value. Uh, yes. Let's try. Good question. Let's say the rank of the ranger is one. So I guess, correct. It inherits the type C for the properties, property values. Okay. Uh, another way to do this is again, you create your custom type. Let's say you have a rangers and define that with, let's say, the key that you want. And then you say it's an object. Now you would want to change this up with this one. It's complaining. Let's see, rangers. Block scope variable might be used before its declaration. So in this case around, what we do is do rangers. Oh, this one should be this. Rangers object object and then this one okay so what happened here is because we define a custom type we want the custom type now to be used okay this would should generate the same one but it's still complaining let's see is it this one resisting <coughs> oh yeah yeah this one. Awesome. Good eye. So refresh. You should still see the same one. And I think there's another type that you can define another one, another type. You can go deeper. Again, this is just good to know. And you can go over this again later. So we define another custom type in Ranger Color. And then in that uh, type, we want a key color and we want it as a string. So this would still work the same way, but now I have to uh, just, I think just hit refresh. Yeah, it's, it still works. Okay. So I think we're done with the uh, uh, objects for the arrays. Uh, remember the pop, push, um, pop, push, shift, unshift. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna code that. Uh, just a pop quiz. What does pop do? Last of the element. What does it return? It returns the last element. No, I think it returns the length of the string, uh, of the array. Okay, um, push, you push the number and it returns the value of the push, if I remember correctly. Let's do that quickly to be safe. Uh, one, two, three, let's see, and then, what's this? Okay, so console.log, let's try that. Uh, let's say r that, 
Let's do the pop first. It gives us, uh, that's a bad, let's change the number. So I, I think it gives us the, the last element and it gives the value. Let's do the push. I that so uh, correct, uh, I, I'm corrected now that when you do a push, you put the value in the array and you get the length of the array. Okay, correct. Okay, when you do a shift though, where does it go? It removes the first element of the array and returns that. Okay, unshift. It's like pushing, but it also returns the length of the array. Okay. Yeah, it goes to the front. So we can do. Hmm? As a question? Oh, I need to refresh it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. A any more questions? Or we're we're going to move to functions. Okay. So to create the function, first things first, you need to create, uh, use the keyword function. And then now you put a name, let's say sing. Okay. And then next is you would, um, Create a name for your parameters. You should open up with a parentheses first. And then let's say word. And then using Java uh, TypeScript type safe, you do string. You want a string as a parameter. And then after the open parentheses, this is only for TypeScript, you can define the data type that you want to return. So let's say I want the function to return a string. Okay. Now, next is you create the function body. The function body starts with the open brace and ends with the uh, closing brace. So here, uh, we can now, let's say, return uh, word plus, because it's a tr string, it concatenates, and then good, good. Okay, console.log, let's say we want this code. Refresh. Yep, correct. So sing this code. So to call a function, you just invoke its, its name. This code, this code, good, good. Okay, so uh, another example is like uh, we can use uh, for numbers, area of a area of circle. And then let's see, um, radius, number. And we want the return type to be a number. Okay. We define a cons because we don't want pi to be changing. Okay. And then let's return the uh, radius times pi. Okay. Now we want to return that. And then we put a number, let's say four. And then you get the value. Go ahead. Yeah. Number is just number. Mm -hmm. It's way different with other like Java and C++. You need to keep defining, oh, it's a float, it's a double. Okay. Oh, question, go ahead. Well, last time we would check with uh, day one, uh, you would lose some precision when your number is like two to the 53rd power, but they're saying that you can use a keyword in JavaScript called big int so that you don't lose any precision. Okay. Um, yeah, correct, 64B. Yeah. yeah. So um, also with, with functions, we can also 
I'll go back to the previous module that we talked about scoping, right? So this function body is a scope. So anything you put there would be local to that function. Say I wanna access uh, pi, the variable, just the variable pi. Let's try that. It says, nope, it cannot find the name pi. Okay, because it's local to the function scope. You put let, so it says, cannot find name pi. Let's try bar though. Cannot find name pi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. And then next, uh, we, I think in the textbook, it also uh, gave us a local binding. Uh, we can go back to this one when we talk about uh, the anonymous function or arrowhead because it might get confusing. Uh, you could also do some nest, nested function though. So if objects, you can do nested objects, it means objects within objects. So nested function is just functions within functions. Yep, uh, I'll just make an easy example for that one. Mm -hmm. Practice, yes, they, they do that. Yes, not, not, not so much though, I believe, yeah. But they do do that. That's why the arrowhead is very useful because it just puts it inside the function and you don't need to name it, right? Okay, let's say we have a make worker. And then let's say, um, let's just say, that one. Oh, before that, uh, as functions as well, you can have a return type of void. Void is just kind of nothing. And it's also called the side effect, okay? So doing console log, it's a side effect if you use it. Let's say, uh, hello. Say make worker, call that function, says hello. Okay, so it also shows that your function, you don't, it does not really require the uh, parameters. You can define no parameters and you can make it as a void. Okay, so let's quickly make a uh, nested function. Okay, let's try that. And then let's say let equals p. And then let's return, instead of returning a value, we return another function, okay? And then in that function, let's log out the name. Okay, so semicolon, and then let's call the make worker. Also put that name equals John that function, let make work. Now we can call this work. So one thing to note that this, you would come up with this error. It says cannot we declare block scope variable name, even though it's outside. And when you pick on the problem, and you see it's a reserve keyword or it's being used somewhere else. So what you can quickly do a quick fix for this one is do an export and then that one. Now you can use name again. Okay, function, return to function. Hmm? Yes. can also have that without the name actually. So let's see, cut, export not defined. So let's just use a different name, variable name then. Okay, and export is not defined, it's still asking for that. <laughs> this one. Here. So what happened here? So when we call the, let's make this bigger. Let's make it smaller a bit. Let's make this bigger. 
So when we call the uh, make worker function, uh, it first goes to line number two. It assigns a, a string value n, and after afterwards in line number three it says, "Hey, return a function," and then the function should log out the variable n. What's the value of variable n? And then in line number eight, we created a, another variable n, John. Functions as well, you can, as it returns, it can return a value, you can assign it, it to another variable. And then code line number 12, it just calls the uh, function work. So basically, what? Yes, the answer is here. Okay, let me uh, explain this. After breaking down the code, now we can do the sequence. The sequence, what happens first is we call the work function. Now you would ask me, we did not create the work function, but because we assigned the maker work function to this variable, we can invoke the variable with the open parentheses, and now we invoke it like a function. Okay, so basically it just invokes the make worker. And now when you're inside the make worker, you again assign the string type Peter, a uh, st string value Peter to a variable n. And afterwards it says, instead of returning the variable n right away, it says, hey, return this function. And this function says, can you please log out the variable n? So meaning it just used the, because again, even though, even though these are two separate functions, this has access to this one, okay? <coughs> what else would I miss here? Okay, turn. So next is, um, let's see. A question? Yes, later. Oh, no. So uh, also you can get away with uh, not using me. Oh, go ahead. So it means that this is outside of the school. It does not really change the school. Let's see. Oh, fudge. I, I started with the harder one. <laughs> Let's go back to the easier one. Okay. That name equals John. And then let's have a function say hi. Okay. And then let's do a console.log. And let's say we want the hi concatenate with the, uh, let's do n. Okay. Okay. So line number one, you already know what it is. Line number three, we have a function with a function name say hi with no parameters. Inside the function body, you have a console.log and it says log out hi plus the n variable. And at line number seven, it says, uh, okay, assign p to n variable and eight, uh, invoke the function, say hi. So what do you think it will show? Is it p or John? So where is n? Even though you don't pass a parameter outside the scope. You know why? So uh, first, if you don't have this one, it will just have the John. It access John. Hmm? Yeah. So what we just uh, simply done is in line number seven, we reassign a new value called P. And then because this one, we just created the function, but we didn't really call it. We didn't invoke it. 
So nothing happens. So this is where it starts, here. And before starting the function, we change the value. Mm -hmm. Questions? As your questions now, because we really, tomorrow it's deeper than this. And to use the type safe, okay, go ahead, please. I called the function in line number eight. Uh -huh. Sure. All right, yep. So just use the type safe with the void, it should still be fine. Okay, let's quickly go back and you would see why types, TypeScript kind of helps us. Let's go back to the previous one. So if we put the type safe, okay, we can put this one as void, right? But again, we're returning a function. So the return type should be function. Now that should work. So right, right from the bat, when you check line number one, you already know this function is returning a function. Instead of checking uh, the return keyword, is it a function, is it a value, is it a void, right? So that kind of helps us. Okay, nope. Okay, don't worry, I'll keep reinforcing this one. Yeah, okay. So let's go back to um, singing, okay? Let's hit, let's go to sing. Because I want that sing. Almost there, almost there. Oh, there you go. Okay. So this is how we, we can define a function, right? So also you can have a function expression. What a function expression just means, you a, assign a variable, okay? We can go ahead and change that to create a variable sing and assign the value of whatever the function will, will give us. So what happens, what happens here is when you're doing function expression, you don't really need to have a function name, okay? And again, the return is, this will be a string. So it means that the variable sing would have the value of that string. And then now when you invoke the function and pass a string as a parameter, it will go to that function and return that. Question? Uh -huh. Next is, um, what if we don't really want a name or an, an, an identifier for the function? So that's where we use the arrow function. It's called the anonymous function, okay? So we just delete the function keyword and just replace that with the arrow function. And then because it does not have, so, Let's remove that. And then, because now the question is, so it doesn't have a name. So how, how can we invoke it? Now that's the time you use the, the let, I mean the, a variable. You assign a variable for that. Let's say const sing. And now you can just use that one. This good. Oh, this code. Okay. It's just syntax. I know it's pretty jarring right now, but you would, it's normal that you write functions a lot. So this would be like uh, pancakes or peanuts to you next time around. Yep. Go ahead with your question. The arrow. Why? 
because sometimes you, uh, let's say you have a function, let's say, uh, <coughs> calculate a, an area of the string. Uh, no, calculate an area of the circle, sorry. And inside of it, let's say, um, you, you have the radius, right? You give the parameter radius. Let's say you need another computation to get the diameter. You can now have, let's say, return the function that also computes the diameter, something like that. And then now, when that returns the value, now the, uh, the parent function can now process that again, and let's say, create their computation. Okay? Again, let's say you have area of a circle, and you provide the radius. Let's just say in a different mathematical world that you also need to do some comp computation before you get the correct radius. Okay, you would now, let's say, do a return, and then let's say a function name called find the correct radius and pass the name radius there. And then now, after that, times pi. Okay, so it's gonna be dependent to another function. It's gonna, let's say, find the correct radius before I multiply to pi. Okay? I know it's kind of fuzzy. Okay. I'll try to find a better example to explain clearly, more clearly. So. Okay, so we have anonymous function. We do have the turn function. Yep, that's it. I need to talk about this one. Um, optional parameters, okay? Let's say we have a function, let's say, build name and in that build name we have a parameter called first name and we want it to be a string and let's say we have a parameter named last name and we want it to be a string and we want the return type to be a string as well oh, should be fine Okay, and then when we, if, let's say, we, let's create an if statement, if there's last name, okay, let's say return first name plus last name, meaning concatenate, else, it means if I don't have the last name, just return the first name. Right, so let's do a build name and let's say my name. Console.log. So let's see. Okay. This is uh, first name. What we don't provide the it will throw an error. An argument last name was not provided. It, the, the function expects two arguments, but we just given it one. But, so another way we can do is make the last name an optional parameter. And we do that with just the question mark. And then now it's just part. Okay. Default parameters on the other hand, let's say you, um, you want the default name to be Smith. So if I don't provide my last name, my last name would be Smith right away. Okay, pretty straightforward. Okay, let's try answering some muddiest point before we go through the slides. Uh, are most functions impure or pure? I'm not sure which one is more common. I do, did ask my software dev uh, housemate. It's, he says like you almost always encounter impure functions because when you never you refactor code and there's always dependencies. Okay, uh, pure functions basically means that whatever your input is, you process that, you calculate, and you have an output. It's pretty straightforward for that. You, you are not dependent to a global variable or another thing. Okay. But we, we, we can, even though it's in the chapter three, right? Um, it should be in the next module. So we're gonna talk more about the pure and impure functions tomorrow. Uh, next um, 
Function explanation seems easy to understand. Uh, side effects were muddy too. So basically, what are side effects? One of it is logging out to the console, returning void. Okay, you're not returning a value, that's a side effect. So what are other stuff? Okay, if you modify an external variable or an object property in your functions, say, that's a side effect. Because now you're manipulating outside of your scope. Okay, so next is you're writing to the screen, which is logging to the console, writing to a file. Because again, with side effects is, um, you're not quite sure what would happen afterwards. Yep. Next is, when would you use a recursive function? So, um, you sh I I've checked around, it's, it really doesn't, uh, they don't say that it's good all the time to use recursion because it eats a lot of memory because when you keep calling functions, it keeps allocating memory. So people tend to use the iterative approach, but people use recursion from time to time because it's super elegant and easy to understand. So let me grab the, that code so I can show you guys. Yeah, so two use cases for, the, uh, for those. Uh, the common one is the Fibonacci number, and the other one is the factorial. We can start with the factorial. I think there's a, okay. Let's start off with a function factorial that doesn't really use a recursion. And if we find the factorial for number five, we should get, uh, I think, 120. Uh, so One twenty, okay. So this is pretty straightforward. You have a f, you have a while, while your number is not yet one. Keep iterating, keep looping, keep looping until you get a one. Okay. Now let's do the recursion, and I'll explain this more. What's on the log? and we still have the same number, correct. So what happens here is um, when we invoke the function, this one, it goes to the function body, it checks what the number is, which is number five, right? So it doesn't go here, it goes to the box. So if it's number five, it says, hey, can you multiply my number five and call the function again? And then, now the number would be four, still gonna go here. Okay. Again, when we call this, it goes here again. Evaluates, evaluates, it's still four, returns. No minus one. So now it's gonna be Yep. Yeah. Actually, a call stack. Uh, I'll, I'll visualize it a bit later. Okay, now we have the number two. Calls the function again. Goes here. Evaluates the dot, dot two, dot two, dot two. Goes here, uh, number becomes two, goes here again, number becomes one, goes here again, and then when number becomes zero, goes here, it returns one. Now, what happened there is you keep not resolve anything, okay? At the first few calls, what happened is factorialize five, it's called, and then if it was resolved, usually function when it's resolved it goes out, right? But no, it was not resolved. So factorialize five is here. It's a stack. Put it in a stack here, and then it calls factorialize four. Goes here above the five, three, two, and then one, and then now it becomes zero. It can resolve, and then now it multiplies the number one times two, <coughs> two, two times three. Six. Six times four. Twenty-four. Twenty-four times five. One twenty. So again, to quickly visualize a call stack. Go ahead. How how uh -huh. 
Yeah. I'll I'll visualize what happened. So so I'm just gonna use the let's just cancel this. Okay. I'm gonna use the bottom half to somehow visualize it with uh, wait, I can't edit this one. Maybe just put this. Ooh. Okay, like that. Okay. So let's say you have a call stack. Oops. And let's say your call stack looks like this. Okay. So again, in a in data structure, when you say a stack, think about um, the dish washing when you go to uh, I don't know hotels or whatever that they put the dish right in a stack, and also you can stack books, right? So what happens here is is just use the word uh, factor. The factor five was called factorialize. Did not get resolved. When it resolved, the call stack should be empty, but it did not get resolved. So you have another one. Then it did not get resolved. Get another one. Get another one. Get another one. Okay. Let's uh, try to do this. Oh, it's, yeah. there you go. So what happens here is this one returns one, right? After this has been resolved, it goes here, it becomes return one. Uh, let's see, one times, I guess one. And then let's say this gets removed, let's just move, return, one times two, which is two. Then this will get to move. The next function is going to use that. Six times no, no. two times three. Six. Now you're going to use this six. Remove this one. And then six times 24. You get uh, no, four. 24, correct? And you move this one. And now you get 24 times uh, five, you get one thing. Now you get the 120 number. Okay. Uh, yep. That's basically it. Call stack. Um, another way to use it, uh, I'm not going to explain much further, but I'm just going to show the code. It's the Fibonacci numbers. So it's just as simple as this. It just says that uh, you put a number in that function and it evaluates if it's, it, it's not true. Oh, small. If it's not true in line number two, go to line number four. In line number four, it calls the Fibonacci number function twice because it tries to add them. Okay. Okay, next question. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, okay, I already talked about the arrowhead function. When we say arrowhead, this is the arrowhead. We call that the arrowhead, which is a syntax for anonymous functions. Uh, recursion bubbles up. I think I answered that. Awesome. Um, again, let's just quickly go back there. Remember, because this is a stack, I want you to understand how we uh, tell the story. We push to the stack, push to the stack, we push to the stack, we push to the stack, we push, pop, 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 pop. Okay? Hmm? 
value values and memory buffer yeah that's why it, it becomes now again if we look for um, answers in the internet right we google code and this is basically a stack and why is it called a stack overflow let's say Okay, I can show you actually here with the same function. So let's say I change, change this and let's say it didn't get me solved. Uh, oh, it's still fine, let's see. Oh, I know. I know how to break this. Uh, return here. Yeah, so let's say you created a, a recursion that doesn't really resolve. Your stack keeps piling up, and now it's called a stack overflow. And that's also the website you go to. Uh -huh. And another, just a funny question. If guys like us, developers, look for answers in Stack Overflow, my question is, where do developers of Stack Overflow look for answers? Yeah, if it's down, if the Stack Overflow is down, right? So abstract and repetition, basically uh, for functions, we use functions for code reuse. We don't want to keep uh, creating the same thing over and over again. So let's say, we want to sum something, right? So without using functions, we need to keep doing this. We have to keep writing them over and over again. So here's the part when we have to like keep modifying, creating that instead of just calling an add function and just supply it with two parameters and that's it. You don't have to keep creating, assigning, adding them together, right? So that's one of the use cases for functions we use. Uh, let's see, I think we're done with that. We can go ahead with the slides. Then we enforce the concept. See lecture three. Okie dokie. Uh, so functions with TypeScript and JavaScript. My name is Fire again. Uh, okay. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, it it gives structure, it reduces repetition, it isolates subprograms. Okay. An expression starts with the keyword function. Okay, sorry for the arrow. It should be this one. Okay, it's the reserved name or keyword function. It has parameters in TypeScript. You can put type safe. Okay, you can define what data type you want for the parameter. Next is you can have multiple parameters. Next is you can have no parameters and no return, which is the void. Okay. Function body is where you have the uh, code block inside of the braces. Okay. There you go. Wrap in braces. Function body is wrapped in braces. Return keyword returns a value when return when function is called. So if I call this square function and supply a number, I would get the x times x, which is a number. When you call a function, it just invokes its name, supply a parameter if it needs a parameter. If it not, you can just have the empty parentheses. Anatomy of a function, again, you have the reserved keyword function. 
you have the optional name, let's say multiply, you have parameters, you can, have, you, you can define the return type, data type, this is only in TypeScript, meaning in JavaScript when you create your functions, you don't really need to put the uh, column number, it won't know what it is, okay? Reserve keyword return, to return a value, and a statement, okay? Another, again, anatomy of a function, uh, th those that are in the open parentheses after the function name is the parameters. It should be separated with commas, okay? Function body is the braces, and it, it's optional to add the keyword return, meaning if I have a function, and then this line I just say x times y, it would think that you would want to return x times y, even though you don't have the return key. Usually, even though we have those, uh, okay, you, you may opt not to do, but people still do it sometimes, but just because for readability, okay? So we've gone with name functions, function expression, our function, shortcut our function expression, I think, function constructor. So a name function is basically a function with a name, okay? A function expression, basically you have a function and you assign it to a variable. Next, uh, oh. Oh, okay, anonymous functions. So again, we have the keyword cons for uh, a variable name of the variable type, data type, a uh, type. And then we have the variable name. We also have uh, parameters that we would assign to that variable name. And then we have the return type only in TypeScript. And then now we use the arrowhead operator that's required as a syntax for anonymous functions. And it's the same, you would have the return and the statement. Arrow function, there you go. That's the only difference is you have the arrowhead, no name, okay? Again, if you don't put any variables, you, would, you could not be able to invoke it unless let's say you have a function that returns an anonymous function. Shorthand arrow function expression. This is an example that we don't, we can opt out not using the return keyword. And new function constructor, it's not really important because you, you create a new function. It just complicate stuff. Question mark operator, if you want optional, okay? And again, if you put Bob, it's fine. If you put Bob Adams Sr., it would say, hey, you supplied too much parameters. If you put Bob and Adams, it will go Bob and Adams, okay? Uh, equal sign operator, um, you assign to that parameter that, hey, I want to have this default value. If not, you can overwrite it, right? Bob which is fine, it will be Bob Ngo. And Bob Adams Sr. is again too many arguments. Bob Adams will output Bob Adams. Okay, so Overloading functions, uh, we forgot to code about this, but this should be fine. It's basically multiple functions of the same name, but different parameter types and return type. However, the number of parameters should be the, t should be the same. Also, we call these parameters as, another word for them is function signature. That's um, different, is, is that a specific to JavaScript? Yeah, different kind of overloads. Okay. Yeah. So this one is just meaning because um, we don't want, let's say, a function that can both concatenate string and add numbers with just one function. That's somehow dangerous, right? So what we do is, let's say, we create, we define the function add, and then the two parameters would be string and return to string. And then we create another definition of the function add. A number is a number. And then now they're just going to reduce this one. And what happens here is if you supply a string, it will check this one and then process this one. If you supply a number, it will use this one and process this one. So, one thing to note if you use the same add thing, and then let's say you have letter C number, it would say it's not allowed because you can only overload the function when you have the same number of parameters, okay? 
Okay, uh, duplicate implementation, function display void, blah. Oh, that's compiler error, duplicate function implementation. We can skip this uh, and that's done. Uh, questions? It, 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 it would look and match. Yeah, it would try and match. It will find first if first do I have a function with the same name and check if I have a function that would satisfy the data type. And then if yes, process it. Okay, um, any more questions? Um, nothing? Functions? Okay. Just don't forget to ask questions even in email or the Apprentice TA Center just to again reinforce the concept because again, that's our goal. Important thing is even though you don't rem remember how to write the syntax, it's fine because you can just Google it anytime, right? But if you don't understand the concept, Yes, you can Google as well, but it's harder to learn. It takes longer to figure out, correct. Syntax is way, way easy, just Google. Yeah. Okay, break time and we're done. And then concept test, test later. I have a question, I'm pretty sure your uh -huh. uh, knowledge of one question on functions is mm -hmm. not correct because it gives you four, five statements and then asks which mm -hmm. one is not true. There are two that are wrong and one is is a function a data type, which is not true? Mm -hmm. And does a function need a function keyword? <coughs> because with this, at least in JavaScript, you can do the Lambda thing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't need either function or a name. I have to ask the TA to look at this one because I forgot to check. And it's not me who built it, I'll check for just what, what's going to happen. So I, I asked them to check, and I'll check as well, and make the necessary changes. And you're saying is, um, what was the questions? The question was... Let me try to check. Do I have access to the question? Module two, you say? Module one, I believe. I'm not sure where the offending question is. Let's see. Um, oh no, it might be module two. Or no, it was in it was in the muddiest point. I'm I'm silly. Oh, okay. Uh, so it should be module two, right? Module two, muddiest point. Yeah. Two. I believe. No, it might have been three. Oh. I'm, I'm silly. I'm, it's okay. Not true of a function. Okay. And what did you... Function is a data type. That is that is not true. Uh -huh. Function is expression that came with a keyword. Sure, that's true. Well, it's... An, a function is not an expression that begins with the keyword function because of, at least in JavaScript. Yep. Because right. we have. If you have a quick question. Right. It's not a quick question. Oh. But so I'll wait. Okay, sure. So uh, let's see. A function without a return value. That's return true. True. A function has a body that consists one or more. Set. True. That's true. Uh, a function that has an associated set of zero or more. True. True. So. <coughs> this one. So that one is, so the top two are not correct. I would believe this is not correct. I'll consult with them. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so just to bring up again, I know you said you're gonna find a better reason why you would write an input function or assign it a function on input variable color rather than the ball. Oh, is it just a, hey, you can do this kind of thing if you want to, or is it there's a specific reason, actually. Uh, um, again, you were saying the function within the function, right? 
So then, oh, not just a function within a function, but assigning a function to a variable name. Oh, just to call the variable name instead of the function name. Like, why you know why? Because um, again, it's one of the options that you can go ahead and not define the function, or uh, I mean, a lambda function or anonymous function. That's the time that. So how do you invoke it? You assign it to a variable. So you can now invoke the variable, which is a function, right? So that's one of the use cases. So it's kind but of I'll like dig a... deeper, but I would say, uh, it would be safe to say that people are using it. So it's kind of like an obfuscation thing. Mm -hmm. I can't say that word, but. Because I, I always see in uh, JavaScript, like a uh, big code base, they always have like, if it's inside something, they would go ahead and use a anonymous function. Because it's weird that you're, sometimes it's weird that you create a separate function and then call that when you can have it inside. There are some use cases, but I'll try to dig deeper to, I guess, better explain it to you.